Hello everyone, it's me, Clayton, and I just got back from watching Pacific Rim Uprising. Now, when I watched the original Pacific Rim a few years back, I realized that it is one of my favorite action films when it comes to just straight-up wish fulfillment, due to my love of mecha anime and giant monsters. But now that Guillermo del Toro, the original director for it, has gone on to win an Oscar for his The Shape of Water movie, personally I think he deserved it, they of course, the studio of course felt like they needed to make a franchise out of Pacific Rim, and that's what Pacific Rim Uprising is for, directed by Stephen S. DeKnight, and starring John Boyega. This is a pretty fun and goofy action film, but it is nowhere near as good as the first one. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story is that it's set a few years after the original film, where our main character is, na is now Jake Pen Cost, played by John Boyega, who is a former Jaeger pilot who has since left the force and who is now and who is now selling old Ye old Jaeger parts to get by. But when he and a young junk mechanic end up getting sent over to the new sent up sent to the new base for Jaeger pilots, he gets contracted to help out a bunch of Younger Jaeger pilots learn the craft, and he also meets back up with his old friend Nate, played by Scott Eastwood. Also, also the, the kaiju are coming back for round two, so they had better prepare quickly. The story here is fairly standard as far as sequels are concerned, but it does work well for the most part. You do eventually get to care about Jake and Amara and, and Nate, and... Not only are the new characters decent, but some of the old faces come back t for a second round, too. Charlie's Day's character comes back, and he's a lot of fun. His uh, assistant comes back. He's as uh, funny as ever. Even Mako Mori returns, although, unfortunately, her role is limited to just stating exposition, which is a bit disappointing, considering how much I loved her from the first film. But the story also is one of the major problems of the movie. The fact that there is so much stuff going on that some of it ends, ends up unresolved, and you can tell that some of it is there to set up a sequel. Heck, there's even an after credit scene, after the final action scene, that lets you know that's exactly what they're going to go for. I have no problem with turning Pacific Rim into a franchise, considering that that's what studios have got to do nowadays, but I just wish they wouldn't make it so blatantly obvious half the time. I wish they I wish they'd saved the sequel building stuff for like just the after credit scene, not spread out throughout the entire movie. Also, some of the new characters are fun when they get enough time to develop, but others, such as some of the new cadets, only get a few minutes to, to really get us to understand their personalities or their motivations, to the point where it looks like they'll have to wait until another film in order to develop them more. Granted, the stuff they do with Jake, with Amara, and with some of the other, uh, a few of the other characters, that stuff's good. But I just wish some of the, some of the other characters got more time to shine. However, if all you're looking for is kaiju versus Jaeger action, there's plenty of it here. There's about four or five big action scenes involving that sort of stuff. There's there's a ton of new weapons that the Jaegers have. The fights are much easier to see, especially since, since the majority of them happen in the daylight. It, and uh, the effects are very, very explosive. They're very flashy. Every fight looks like it had a lot of effort put into it. It's clear that if you're going to enjoy Pacific Rim Uprising, the, the highlights are going to, of course, be the action scenes. And thankfully, they're inventive enough and creative enough to the point where you don't get tired of them till the very end of the film. And if they keep up this imaginative, imaginative stuff with the action choreography and the weapons and the different kinds of kaiju that they fight, I could see this going on for quite a while as far as a film series is concerned. I just wish the stuff with the human characters and the story was better realized. But it is a serviceable Pacific Rim movie, and if you are looking for a good time, you'll definitely find it. So I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. See you next time.